All right, welcome back to the channel. Today, let's talk about this article, How to Mine Ethereum, a step-by-step -step guide. I thought it was uh, pretty good. It's only a day old. We're talking January 19th, 2022. And I thought uh, for beginners out there, this may be a good place to uh, get started, just to understand the various parts of mining and your options and exactly what is it. So this is from businessinsider.com, the old businessinsider.com, how to mine Ethereum. Uh, let's just go through it. I'm just gonna go through each paragraph and uh, you can go find it yourself. It's businessinsider.com and just look for how to mine Ethereum and you can get the details. Again, this video will be for uh, new folks who are just curious about what is mining? How do I get started? Do I want to get started? And what are the various types of mining? So let's jump right into it. Okay, right off the bat, I'm just a little confused by why they are saying, unless you're willing to invest tens of thousands of dollars in equipment, a mining pool is the simplest way to start mining cryptocurrency. A mining pool to me is where I point my hardware, my mining software, T-Rex miner, NV miner, our various software miners, GPU miners, the, and uh, CPU miners as well. You specify the pool for your hardware to go and get blocks to do the computations on and get your rewards and payouts and all that stuff. So that's why I don't know what they're talking about. I think maybe they meant to say Instead of mining pool, maybe a uh, cloud mining. That's my hunch. Because cloud mining is where you're just buying in. You're running the equipment or you're running the services and you're getting payouts. They do all the work, the maintenance, the uh, hosting, the uh, upgrades, the configuration, all that stuff. And you're paying in. You pay a fee, obviously, but it's cloud mining. And then you just sit back and collect uh, payouts, crypto payouts. That's what I think they meant. I may be an idiot, I don't know. Most likely I am, according to my wife, I'm an idiot. Okay, let's go on. Mining ether is the process of using computing power to solve complex puzzles and validate the blocks. The blocks are, like I said, you go to the mining pools and they have blocks, and if you have your hardware, your GPUs and or CPUs pointed at these uh, mining pools, that's where the blocks are. So you still need equipment. So that's again, don't wanna be a dead horse, let's go on. There are different methods of mining, with pool mining being the most straightforward method, especially if you don't have much hardware, I think she means cloud mining. I'm not sure. Once you've set up your mining operation and configured, and configured a wallet, you can start collecting ether. Um, yeah, yes and no, but there are payouts like ether mine. You start mining ether, it accumulates, but there's a payout limit. And then when you reach that threshold, then you gotta pay the gas fee, the high absorbent, ridiculous, ether killing gas fee to get your payout to your wallet. And uh, that's why I think either mine's gonna, ether, Ethereum's gonna die once it goes to proof of stake because people are not gonna be the fanboys of it anymore because mining made them, you know, gave them money and that goes away. What's the point in supporting it anymore? Plus with the high fees, it's just a big turnoff. That whole Ethereum token, anything ERC, I don't know, that whole Ethereum ecosystem, I don't know. The fees kind of turn me off anyway. But you're making money on it now, so it's a, it's a necessary evil. But you can do two miners, mine Ethereum and or NiceHash and get paid on Bitcoin. Ah, so there you go. There's, there's workarounds. Okay, I'm not going to skip on down. Ethereum is a digital platform that runs on blockchain technology. It's, mostly, uh, it, it's most commonly known for its smart contract functionality and native cryptocurrency ether the broader the broader purpose of ethereum network is to enable decentralized app d apps such as marketplaces for non-fungible tokens nfts transactions within these programs are publicly distributed and don't require a central authority for governance as a result the ethereum network needs a global system of computers to compile and verify each batch of transactions i.e a block 
within the platform's blockchain. Okay, there's a block, which are a bunch of transactions in each blockchain. The mining pools are uh, have these blocks, and then you can maybe mine these blocks to get some yummy rewards and payouts. Okay, that's where mining comes into play. In essence, miners use the computing power of dedicated hardware to solve complex puzzles. This process not only allows the network to function, but also protects it from hacking and other malicious attacks in exchange for their services, miners receive a transaction fee, a predetermined amount of ether upon the successful validation of a block. Miamo, that's what you're in it for. You're in for those yummy blocks. And that's what it's all about. The Ethereum network is anticipated to move to a different incentive model called POS, which is proof of stake, to be clear. Proof of stake, not what the other POS stands for. At some point in 2022, however, if you want to explore Ethereum mining, in the meantime, we've outlined the setup process and best practices. Yeah, a note on this POS if you're new to it. They're, they're, right now you mine it, right? And you get paid out, like you said, in the rewards by processing blocks. You get paid for their services. You, re you receive the transaction fee. They're going to move to proof of stake. So mining with GPUs will no longer be required. When it's going to move, they don't know. They keep saying middle of 2022, but with anything software related, there's always a delay. There's always a delay. It takes a lot of uh, cycles. It takes a lot of cycles to um, push out new features, new functionality. So you never know. We'll see what happens with that. All right, let's go through it. Step one, baby. Step one, get your notes out. All right. Uh, step one, pick your mining approach. There are currently three different approaches to Ethereum mining. Pool mining, which is what I said. You point your hardware at these pools. Uh, let's do with eth Ethereum. The biggest one is Ethermine. You basically have a, uh, a um, stratum you point to. Their URL, which is their mining pool. You give them your wallet address. And that is uh, then collected on the uh, mining platform, the, the uh, pool. And when you reach certain thresholds, like say 0.1 ETH, then you can transfer to one of your wallets. The wallets you should already have set up. You need to if you're going to go to the pool. But you also have to pay the gas fee. The ether, it's an Ethereum fee just to move your money from one platform to another. It's ridiculous. It's it, Normies hate it. I mean, if you're a normie and you're coming in, and I tell you, well, you know, you just bought this Ethereum, right? And you paid a small fee on the exchange. Well, guess what? You want to move that to your hard wallet or to another exchange? Well, guess what? There's another fee and you're going to hate it because the fee is ridiculous. Like I had to move one. I swear I had like I say 100 bucks in uh, I forgot the coin, first coin or something, ERC token. Just to move it to my wallet, they wanted, uh, I think, 60 bucks. In ETH, I said, forget it. Just keep it there. I'm not moving it. You get a normal guy into crypto, you tell him that, it's it's the showstopper. I I don't care what you say. Having said that, you do make money mining, and to get the payouts, you can set your gas fee, what you're willing to pay, at low amounts. Like I do 40 to 50. It most often never hits. Does that make sense? You're going to be on that pull a long time. So the joke is, Ether mine, which is an Ether pull, has become the biggest software wallet out there because people don't want to pay the huge fees to get their money off so they're waiting and waiting but and while they're waiting they keep mining eth and it keeps stacking coins stacking coins yeah interesting right all right let's go through it pool mining is the most straightforward way to mine ether especially if you don't have much hardware which i don't know what, she, what they mean by that that's because mining ethereum has gotten increasingly difficult and time consuming as more coins have entered circulation pool mining allows miners to combine their collective computing power to solve ethereum blocks in less time yeah collective computing power but you need hardware to point to the pool so i think they misunderstand cloud and pool maybe i do i'm maybe i understand maybe i think of terms differently i don't know in turn the rewards are split between the group yep based on power contribution, which is measured by hash power. Hash is king. Important, hash power is the computing power used by the hardware to solve crypto algorithms. And the Ethereum algorithm is called ETHash. Each coin has its own algorithm. Litecoin and Dogecoin or Dogecoin is script, S-C-R-Y-P-T. Well, you, there's a table of all this stuff, but 
Consider a coin has an algorithm. That algorithm is what you're processing to get those yummy payouts and solve the blocks. There you go. Solo mining. It is more complex and requires considerable hash power. To solve puzzles in a realistic amount of time by yourself, you uh, likely need a farm of elaborate mining rigs powered by dozens of graphics cards and or CPUs. Uh, if you choose this route, it's important to consider the financial and spatial implications beyond equipment costs, which could be thousands, thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars. You should also evaluate factors like ventilation, noise, electricity costs, and physical space. Um, that's the same for uh, pool mining. You have to have GPUs to mine to a pool. I mean, it's almost the same. Solar mining, if you do hit a block, you could really get a lot of coin. You know what I mean? And payout. It's hard, though. CPU mining is hard. CPU mining, Raptorium. Solar mining, you could do it through the wallet. But it, you might not hit at all. So you could be sitting out there churning, burning, burning power. Wallet mining, see, uh, solo mining, and just not get anything in a week or so. And But if you do hit, you're going to hit big, I guess. that's I've just never hit. I gave up on it. I went back to running against the mining pools. All right. For these reasons, solo mining is generally only recommended for professional miners who are willing to make significant capital investment. That said, this approach can be more profitable in the long run. Yes, that's what I said. Yeah, you would avoid the fees and sharing the profits with the other people in the mining pool. This is true. But again, even if you're not solo mining, you're mining to a pool, you got to buy the equipment. And you, if you want a decent rig, let's just say, like here, I got a 6 GPU 3080 Ti LHR, nine, they're getting 90 mega hash each, which is not horrible. But still, that H LHR kind of is a, is a mining blocker, right? But with those cards, six times, yeah. And the motherboard and CPU, you just need a basic motherboard to handle uh, six GPUs. You might have to tweak the BIOS, do some settings in there. It's not difficult. You just got to know what you know. You just got to know. You just got to learn what to set in the BIOS. And it's not terrible. You just got to look in the right spot to get the information. And I have that in videos here as well and other videos. But the GPUs and motherboards and power supplies... Let's just say conservatively, oh my gosh. And you only need a basic CPU just to run. Like a, if you get an MSI motherboard of 470 or something, you can, just, you can just get a Ryzen 3. So a couple hundred bucks and under. One memory stick. And then the six GPUs. I'm going to say, uh, this might be really conservative. 13K for a rig right now based on the price of GPUs. And everything that's going to be that's going to be roughly it maybe a little high depends what you get those gpus for if you can get them but i don't know so you're going to be spending lots of money cloud mining is usually the easiest mining approach in terms of barriers to entry yes i did a video on that the other day under this approach you don't need to buy a fancy system or commit your personal computer to mining instead you pay another miner an upfront fee to mine coins for you they do the mining while you receive the newly minted coins. However, renting another miner's computer power introduces additional risks such as scams and fraud. If you don't entrust this service to a reputable miner, it's uh, possible that they may simply take your upfront payment and run. It's the Wild West, guys. It is still the Wild West out there with mining. So do your research. Ask around. There are cloud services. I did a video on some of them and somewhere overseas, UK, and you're, I just... Spidey Sense said stay away from them. There's another approach that's going on now. It's all TBD. Uh, River Financial has a, a a crypto mining, what do you call it, package they're setting up. It's still TBD. Whereas they will ha uh, house, maintain, service the ASIC machines to mine Bitcoin. You buy the machines, they house and run and maintain it, which is great because you don't worry about power, heat. Uh, space, configuration, maintenance, cleaning them. You pay them for that. You're going to pay them a fee, right? But with anything in life, it could be worth it. You know, the juice works to squeeze. You have enough time, space, electricity to run it in your house, noise. Let someone else do it. And the way they're going to do it, you're going to own the machine. It's going to be in their facility. You'll get paid on Bitcoin into your River Financial bit, uh, Crypto account. 
And there you go. You own a machine which could be good or bad. Because say in a year you want out or the it just isn't as profitable or whatever. What do you do with that machine? Do they ship it to you? Do they buy it back? Is it like a buyback program? They I need to get answers on that. So I'm waiting to get the call eventually one day and say, hey, I want to buy maybe one or two machines. What's the cost? Blah, blah, blah. It could be 10 to 20K, right? Depends what kind of machines they are. Now, Intel's coming. That's another story. Intel's getting into the market with their own Bonanza chip and Bitcoin uh, ASIC. So that's going to be awesome. Yeah, so cloud mining might be a good entry, but you got to be careful, man. There's In this world, the norm for human nature is to take the money out of your wallet and put it in their wallet. Okay, step two, open a crypto wallet. Blah, blah, blah. I would say this should be step one. You got to get your crypto wallet because then you can go out and I'd say step one is get used to crypto. Go out, get on an exchange. I'm not a big fan of Coinbase just because they were first doesn't mean they're the best. Go to BlockFi, go to Voyager. I like Voyager. I have referral links below. They give great, great, awesome interest on your crypto, on your Voyager account. And if you have the Voyager token, you get a little boost with that. In addition to the interest, they add on 0.5%, which is sweet. So you're getting passive income on your crypto and you can keep it in your hardware wallet too. But then I'd like, I'm just taking the risk. I want to get, I just want to get that yummy interest. You know, I want passive income. I want to make money while I'm sleeping. So I would say first step, go out and buy a hundred bucks of Bitcoin. If you go through the referral links on BlockFi and Voyager, you buy a, or something, 150 bucks, you get 20 bucks in Bitcoin. It's awesome. What a great deal, right? And then you'll see how it works. You got your you're given a Bitcoin wallet address, and then you can say, "Oh, I got my address. Sweet." Now you know what it is. You can have many addresses, but there you're started. Step one. Now you understand how it works. You bought it. It's crypto. There's a USD value. It goes up and down. There's a, you know if you want to compare that. There's fees. So make sure you keep track of the fees because everyone wants their you know everyone's going to charge you a little fee to move it, buy it, whatever. But that's the best way to learn. Do that first and then start looking at the mining stuff. You can actually mine. Well, what I do, I mine, say, on a mining pool. And then when I get my payouts, my payouts will go to one of those one of those uh, accounts. And then they'll get interest on the um, crypto that I just mined. Ethereum, like, not like on Bitcoin, Raptorium, whatever. Raptorium, I'm using smart notes. Same thing. I'm getting paid rewards. For putting my crypto with them it's kind of sweet yeah passive income probably the two greatest concepts in financial growth and wealth building wealth is compounded interest and um, passive income right make your money work for you all right there's hardware wallets which are physical devices which are also referred to as cold wallets that store your crypto accounts, private keys offline. They often look like high-tech USBs. Ledger is one. There's a couple out there. There's a million yeah, treasures. There's a whole bunch now out there. Do your research. This, this article is great to give you ideas. Where, you know, it just gives you the high-level concept of what it is. And I'm just trying to add you my experience. Yeah, just go buy some Bitcoin. Stick with the top four coins. Don't be running off getting coins that are meme coins and that. Because, you know... If you're not on top of this stuff, you're going to lose all your money. And when this stuff came out, I was trading in 2016. Some of these altcoins I bought just disappeared. And I'm just like, what do I do with this? I just lost money. You know, you can't exchange it. You can't do anything with it. It's just gone. That's why I stick with the top coins. Think of Bitcoin as a store of value, a digital gold, digital real estate. Think of it that way. All right, we did software wallets or digital programs that house your crypto, typically requiring an internet connection to access. These wallets provide both public and private keys. There's Exodus, Zellcore, uh, Coinbase has a wallet. I think BlockFi just came out with a wallet. I can't remember. They're all out there. There's exchanges where you buy it, then you can move the stuff to wallets, and or you can move it to your cold storage, your hard wallet, which is that little stick, memory stick. But don't lose that memory stick because then you lost your crypto. Put it in a safe. Put it in a vault. That way, then set it and forget it, man. Maybe Bitcoin will go to 100,000, like they say. Okay, there are, uh, let's see, there are pros and cons to both. Hardware wallets are generally regarded as safer because they aren't linked to an online platform, correct? 
That said, they're usually more expensive and less convenient than a software wallet. But on the other hand, software wallets are far more convenient as you can access them through a web browser or mobile app. Conversely, that means they're more susceptible to hacking than an offline wallet. Yep, that's always a huge, huge concern. Make sure you have the right hardware and software. Before you start mining Ether, you'll have to set up your infrastructure. Mining cryptocurrency requires a ton of computing power, so you'll need a strong computer. You can start with one gaming computer with one GPU. If you want to mine an Ether profitably, your hardware setup largely depends on what mining approach you choose. Yeah, make sure you have enough power. Do not overtax your power. And I have a little uh, spreadsheet. Do I still have it? It shows you how to understand your basic 15 amp service versus getting a 30 amp 240 volt service. Uh, it depends on how much you're going to put on it. Do not overtax because you'll start tripping breakers and it's just not safe. So you got to understand power. Okay, I brought up this little power cheat sheet. How many watts can an outlet handle? So if you have a 110, 15 amp, which is most houses, there's a 1650 watts. Now, you take an 80% rule. You never want to go and burn 1650 off that puppy. You want to go 80% of that. So be, be mindful of that. If you have a, all right, so let's go through. How many watts can a 110 volt outlet handle? If you have a 15 amp circuit, you can calculate the watts by multiplying 15 amps by 110 volts. This gives you 1650 watts available. If you use NEC's 80% rule, you actually have 1,320 watts to work with. So mindful of that. So 1,320 is good. You can get a meter that's going to tell you how much draw each rig, each computer is taking off the outlet. And uh, the, the PDU, the, the, the backup power will have one as well. And it, it'll, you can set alarms on it too. It'll start beeping if you're getting close to say you hook up a bunch of rigs in the back of this backup power supply and uh, like an a APC power supply or something like that. You can get them for a few hundred bucks. And uh, if you're getting close to say, I mean, if you go over the 80% rule over 1320, you're getting close to 50, you know, close to like 90% and higher. It's going to start beeping and it may shut off. It may be a safety thing for you too. I think mine does that. If I get really high up and I start drawing a lot, it's going to beep, 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 and it's just going to shut down just for safety. So that's kind of good. Uh, just be mindful of that. This is a good thing to snapshot just to understand how it works. It's pretty straightforward. You just have to have a meter that uh, registers how much you're drawing on the CPUs. I mean, how much you're drawing out of the wall when you plug it in. Like uh, I eventually ended up getting a... Oh, it's not on here. A 30 amp service with 240 volts. It was formerly hooked into an old tank water heater and we just rerouted it because it was just not being used. So I already had a 30 amp uh, circuit breaker in the panel and we uh, extended the cable to the, uh, to the office where the uh, grow 10 is with the rigs and the CPU mine, uh, CPU rigs as well. All right, let's go on. Let's get rid of this. Done. Uh, let's see. If you're more of a casual miner, consider joining a mining pool. In that case, you uh, likely need a combination of the following. A computer or dedicated mining rig with one of the more graphics processing units, GPUs, and it's a uh, Ethereum mining operating system. These can vary in terms of functionality, ease of use. I don't know what that even means. I use Windows 10. <laughs> and you can also use Hive OS. You can use these... Um, crypto rig monitoring software thing, configurators like Hive OS, NiceHash. But with that, you pay a fee. And I hate paying a fee. I won't pay a fee. So that's just me. I'll pay a fee once I find I need to pay a fee. I don't want to pay a fee right now. I can manage this stuff on my own. Is that ideal? No, but I like knowing exactly what's going on. GPU drivers, which enable communication between your graphics card and operating system. So with NVIDIA, there's a GE Force that you can download. But I did find, I was downloading the latest NVIDIA drivers all the time. And for example, on my 3080 Ti's, I had the latest NVIDIA driver as of 2022 or 2021 December. And I just, why is this thing getting lower and lower hash rate from Ethereum? And I remember someone made a comment in one of the videos in the post and said they're using an older driver. So I went back to roughly August of 2021 
NVIDIA driver. I rolled back, got that driver, updated the uh, GPUs on my Windows. I went to the device manager, update driver, chose the driver from August 2021. And now the GPUs, they actually get better hash rate than if they were running with a new driver. So don't always be updating. If things are working great, fine, don't touch them. If you want to try a new driver that comes down, a new release, maybe maybe do it on a, a test bed. I mean, I know it's more money. Just get a motherboard with one GPU that you want to try and upload the driver and say, hey, it's getting worse performance. Let's not upgrade the main rig. You know, that's, that's all part of learning. You're going to learn how, how to do all this stuff. It's not undoable. You just got to watch videos, read books, ask for help. You can do it. You can do it. Do the hardware core, hardcore miner and pursue solo mining. I want to do that. You can you can buy an ASIC and all that stuff. You can look at the mini Doge ASICs if you want. They're designed specifically to mine crypto. For that reason, they tend to generate more computing power and solve blocks in less time. There are trade-offs. ASICs can uh, retail for tens of thousands of dollars, creating a higher barrier to entry for average miner. Uh, they consume more power and uh, than the Z GPUs. And it may drive your electricity bill, obviously. On top of that, ASICs are optimized for a specific coin, such as Ethereum or Bitcoin, whereas GPUs can mine any coin. Yeah, you got to watch that. You're mining a specific coin with an ASIC. That coin uh, goes away. Boom. You got a brick. A brick is a piece of equipment that doesn't do anything. It becomes a nice doorstop. Expensive doorstop. Okay, with the arrival of POS model looming, I would recommend purchasing a GPU over an ASIC rig. Unfortunately, ASIC miners will see their rigs become obsolete when Ethereum 2.0 is implemented. Without being able to sell any of its components for more than a few bucks, using it as space heater during the winter months might be the most value you can get out of it in the future. And all right, he's honest. That is true. These things put out heat, whether it's GPU or ASICs. ASICs are noisy. They got these high speed fans. Uh, you have to have a garage or a basement or a shed. It's noisy and they all generate heat. Consider all that and power. Power is your biggest expense. Uh, maintaining the heat is it your probably your next. You put them in a grow tent, you got to ventilate, 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 keep the air moving. I think if most people have a computer with a nice graphics card, even a laptop, you can actually start CPU and GPU mining from a laptop. If you have a 3080, a 1600 series card, AMD type card in your laptop, you can try it. Just Download the software, get it up and running, configure the wallet. It's not that hard. You can do it. And then, man, if you're making, say, three bucks a day over a month, it's 30 bucks over, what, a year, it's 360 bucks. That's 360 bucks you never had before. You don't mind his taxes, maybe 300, 300 bucks, you know? In history, look back at the old gold rush days in the 1800s. Who were the guys that made the most money? It wasn't the miners. It was the guys that provided the services, the tools, the hammers, the shovels, the picks. Yeah, we reap, reap your rewards, time for all the hard work, at least from your computer, to pay off. Once you set up your mining operation and configure a wallet, you can start passively collecting ether. You still have to maintain it. You gotta keep it clean too. The things collect dust, oh my God. Assuming you're a member of a mining pool, you uh, receive payouts and a periodic installment based on the block solving success of your group. Most mining pools have online dashboards, yeah and that users can access, access and assess mining performance, such as the efficiency and the yield. Blah, blah, blah. The most profitable pools historically, historically have been Ethermine. I, generally speaking, a major catalyst for mining a particular crypto is the belief that the coin will appreciate in value. So at this point and going forward, you're responsible for managing your crypto holdings. In other words, you're not only a crypto miner, but also an investor. Yes, there's two, two two areas to this. You could just take the money. There's two mindsets, right? 10,000, 12,000 bucks on a rig with six GPUs and everything ready to rock and roll, right? Or take that 12, 13,000 bucks and dollar cost average into Ethereum. Difference is you're buying the equipment, you're mining coin and you're building value. You're thinking that coin could keep going up. And then after you, ROI, the cost of your equipment, everything else is profit. So it's a mindset. Do you just take the money and buy the coin, dollar cost average in, and just hope it goes up? You're starting with your investment 
into the coin versus buying equipment to get the coin, but then you keep getting the coin. So it's, it's all what you want. I mine it to stack coins, hoping that whatever I get the payout, say I get Ethereum and it pays out at 3,000, I believe it's gonna go to 9,000. So, all right, best practices. Although Ethereum is a popular cryptocurrency, there are noteworthy pros and cons to mining Ether. This particular platform has made strides in terms of application and development. NFT marketplaces are a prime example. In turn, Ethereum has garnered a lot of attention from both miners and investors alike. But if your goal is simply to bet on the future of Ethereum, you may be better off buying Ether rather than mining it. If you're not sure you want to get into this and the maintenance, because you're, it's it's a little bit of work. It's not past total passive income. You got to work at it. You got to monitor the systems. You got to know when to switch because some pulls may go away. Yeah, you know, the coins may change. Stuff like that. You just may be better off buying it. Also, it's important to monitor changes to the Ethereum protocol. While Ethereum is a decentralized platform, its developers still update its mechanics from time to time, which can impact block validation procedures and mining profitability. Yeah, pulls can go down too, like I mentioned. Your hardware can go down. You gotta be on top of this stuff. That is it, guys. Thanks for bearing with me. Thanks for going through this with me. So the takeaways are, what do you wanna do? I'd say if you have a gaming PC or a laptop, just start small. I did, I, I started with a 2013 gaming PC. I had one old card in it, I bought a new card. And uh, I think it was a 1660 Super. And I just started from there just, just to see how it worked. Then I was able to score some other GPUs. Probably spent more than I should have and then been mining ever since, having to deal with the heat, the power requirements, and now even tax stuff with mining. Um, yeah. Do you do you buy the equipment and mine if you're really into it, if you want to taste, ta get a taste of it? Just start small, do a laptop or something. You can buy a laptop, like a Lenovo or a Dell, for less than a GPU these days, you know what I mean? And just start there, because some of these laptops have 3060s on them. And you can just use that, get a couple bucks a day. And if you're hooked, then knock yourself out, go for it. Just be mindful, prices are at scalper prices. GPUs prices appear to be coming down because we're kind of, it feels like a bear market's hitting, but you just don't know. Then that's the other question. Do you buy the equipment, jump into this uh, hobby, uh, part-time business, whatever you want to call it? Or do you take that revenue and just go out and buy Ethereum and Bitcoin through your BlockFi or Voyager exchange and, you know, dollar cost average in, start getting interest right away. I mean, having just said that, that may be, a, that's a smart idea. <laughs> it's almost, it's tough. It's really, it's a tough decision. It's, it's like if it's your hobby, then go ahead, you know, be mindful what you're spending and you can always sort of resell your GPUs on eBay or something or locally and get some money back, but then there's the hassle of dealing with people uh, and selling stuff, or you just buy the stuff. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. It's a tough question to, to answer. Do you just buy the coins outright, get the interest on it passively, and you can even put like Raptorian, put it into smart nodes and get interest right away, rewards, uh, versus mining it and paying the electricity and buying the equipment, yeah. I guess it depends on how well the coins are doing if you're profitable when you're mining. All right, something to think about. Good article, go check it out. Hope this helps. Again, this is Taylor for newer folks to the arena. I, I wish I would have had kind of this when I started. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe, share it, and let me know what you think. I hope this helps. And again, I like the, I, the question of whether you buy the hardware and mine versus investing is a great question that you should look into. All right, thanks for watching. I'm out. I'll talk to you all later.